Thank you, Lord. All right, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endure forever. We thank God for another Sunday. Amen. Look into the word of God and uh, a rebuke from the Lord, what Deke's already said. Uh, today, we are in lesson, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we are in the third unit of success and failure in our fall quarter. We have this lesson and one more um, for this quarter. This quarter has been dealing with Israel's strong points and Israel's weak points. Amen. Amen. And 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 this uh, we the first we started off strong with everything that was good, and then Israel uh, started to slide, and now they 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 have fallen and they can't get up, so to speak. <laughs> but how do you know that there's grace and mercy in God? Amen. Anybody glad about that? Amen. You know, one point I don't think is emphasized. I think it, it, it's emphasized um, to the point where sometimes people kind of misconstrue what God is trying to say. Uh, you know, some people rely on the grace and mercy of God, that God's always going to receive them back. Right. But that's not supposed to be the, the that's supposed to be the exception right. and not the rule. Yeah. Paul writes in Romans, uh, I believe the sixth chapter, uh, I think it's the first first few verses. He says, how can we continue in sin Amen. that grace may abound? God forbid. How can you live any longer in something that, I'm paraphrasing here, something that you're supposed to be dead to? Amen? Right. So so here, Israel, uh, and if you ever read the book of Amos uh, in the Old Testament, if you have not, I recommend you read the whole book. Because Amos is speaking at a time when the children of Israel, during the time that Jeroboam ruled Israel, was a time of exceptional prosperity. The king of Israel was growing. They were prosperous. They were they had everything they need, but they lacked the, the spiritual integrity. And um, a lot of times we can we can kind of relate that today to today. Is that you know we're living in a time really of pro no matter what the stock market and things are going on. You know most of us have more than we've ever had. Amen. Amen? And 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 uh, we have to make sure that we keep God in the midst of everything that we're doing. Where children of Israel did not do that, Amen. Uh, so uh, if you get a chance, please make sure you share us today. Praise God. Do the work of an evangelist on this morning and share us with your family and friends that we can encourage somebody through the Word of God. Can we say Amen? All right. So let's read these first couple of verses here, and then we're gonna talk and see. So y'all got to talk back to me today. Is that all right? Amen. All right. It says, seek the good and not the evil, that ye may live. Amen. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil, love the good, establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts be gracious unto the remnant of Josh, of Joseph. Amen. So here, God is speaking to Amos. So God has a, Amos, and through God has a way of being very plainly speaking to us. Amen. Amen. He tells us, "Look, seek good and not evil, that you might live." So, so this is something that's very profound that that that, that He's trying to encourage the people of God to do. And so that the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Now, I got a question for the class. Anytime you see the the, the vernacular in the Scripture, uh, God of hosts or Lord of hosts. Does anybody know what that particular vernacular means? Those two words there. Anybody know? Because it does mean something inside of the scripture that we're reading. Lord of hosts. Anybody. Everybody. Jesus. Somebody. Jesus. <laughs> now, not Jesus talking, but the Lord. He said the Lord of hosts. What's, what's that mean? Is it referring directly that, that this is from God himself? It is from God himself. Yes. It means something else, too. Okay. Anybody know? All right, I'm going to share it with you. When Anytime you see the vernacular Lord of hosts or God of hosts, God is speaking from a standpoint that he is a ruler of the armies of God. And he's ready to fight for us on our behalf. So when he when so in Psalms 27, said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come. Who is the king of glory? He's the Lord, strong and mighty. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the king of glory. So anytime you see the word, the, the, the words God of hosts or Lord of hosts, that means the Lord is ready to fight 
on not fight against you, but fight for you. Amen. So he says right here, so that the Lord of hosts shall be with you as you have spoken. So here he's telling us in the midst, Amos is using this vernacular, seek the good, not evil, that you may live so that the Lord will fight for you that you can get what you need from, from him. That you'll, he'll fight for your cause. He'll fight for your benefit. He'll fight the enemies that are trying to keep you from doing what God has called you to do. The Lord, we need God to fight for us. Amen. Amen. The, what you got? You got anything you want to share there in that first couple of verses? Wow. I mean, as I was reading it, I, you know, it's a really short uh, angle to really short book. Right. But, you know, it, I understand that Jesus is telling us commandments that if we love him, that if we love him, we'll hate evil. And right. So many people, they try to mix it in today. Right. They try to pick and choose. Uh, overlook sin and say, well, you know, that's okay. But he's saying that we don't hate them as an individual. We hate what they do. Correct. That's so true. And too many times, guess what? We want to hate the person and not hate the sin. And it takes spiritual understanding to understand that people, first of all, let's back up. Remember who we are. We, we're, we're saved by grace through faith. It's none other than what? The gift of God. So God has gifted us salvation, all right? And the next person next to me is it was in the same situation I was in. It has not been for the grace of God. So we have to understand that uh, the Lord does not hate the individual. He hates their behavior. Amen? Because behavior is a manifestation of your thoughts. And that's why God and, and your thoughts are a manifestation of what you feed yourself through your senses. Eye gate, what you look at. Ear gate, what you listen to. Mouth gate, what you taste and consume. Touch gate, what you what you grab a hold of. Amen? Amen. Smell gate, what you allow your senses to engage with. So, so that's why the Lord uh, wants us to understand uh, uh, that he's ready to fight and that God wants us to hate evil. But guess what? Just like God, Jesus says he wants us to love uh, the good, hate the evil. God tells Israel, hate the good, hate, uh, love the good, hate the evil. Guess what? Today, we want to pick and choose a day what things we want to hate and the things we don't want to hate. When the Lord has drawn a line and down some things. Amen. 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 And we have to learn how to do and speak where and, and, and stay where God wants us to stay. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, and we see here that we have to strive by the grace of God to do that. Amen. Because we got loved ones that we love dearly, but they ain't living for God. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and sometimes, praise the Lord, we want them saved, but they have no mind to be saved. Right. But guess what? If that's the case, guess what? Uh, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So though I love you and I care for you, you can't bring that over to my house. Right. Amen. Amen. You can't bring that into my house because this house, we dedicate this house to the Lord. And, and hopefully, guess what? I love you. And watch this. I respect what you do over there. Right. Love me enough to respect what I do over here. See, what, what people who ain't living right want to do is they want to come in. And, and because you're a Christian and right. because you love God, they expect you to just roll over. Right. No, no. <laughs> I ain't rolling over. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't love me. How can you love God and treat me this way? I love God, but the word of God says this. Praise the Lord. And I'm, I'm going to share it with them and say, look, I just, I'm not going over that side. Because uh, as, 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 as Zeke says, guess what? If you love God, you're going to love God. If you hate evil, you hate evil. But I still love you as a person. Amen. And I want your soul to be what? Be saved. Amen. Any questions, comments? Go ahead. Let's talk to me. Praise him. Praise him. Okay, well, I'm going to give you a script too. Mm -hmm. with this. That's good. It says Romans 12, 9, 10. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted in brotherly love. Honor one another above the self. Amen. So that just basically tells you, okay, God loves us. God is love, you know, and um, he wants us to love one another above yourself. So if he wants, if God is love and he wants you to love one another, then why aren't we doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. 
we need to do we need to follow his laws and we need to love one another. Like if if your brother needs help or your sister needs help, help him out. Right. You know? I do it all the time, but like sometimes we we let our pride. Here we go. The P word. There it is. Pride <laughs> stand in our way, which is the devil. Oh, uh, Lord. We can't let that pride stand in our way because I'm 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 guilty of it. Uh huh. I know we all are guilty of it. Praise him. I told my dad, man, I got so much pride, man. I can do this by myself. No, you can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why God is in our corner. Amen. And we gotta love one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Right, that first couple of scriptures. He says, look, so he tells us again, hate the evil. What? Love the good. Establish judgment. Judgment, remember at this time, where the corrupts fair, where the corrupt, where the court, excuse me, where the courts fair, or the courts corrupt. They were corrupt. The courts were corrupt. The judges were taking bribes uh, and they were just, they were ruling in behalf of those who paid the highest dollar. It's hard to believe that in God's kingdom, in his natural kingdom, that's what was going on. But Guess what? When corruption comes in, it corrupts everything. Amen. And that's why uh, you have to be able to uh, establish judgment in the gate. That means in the, that this, this vernacular in the gate. So let me back up. So during this time, they didn't necessarily go to a courthouse. There will be elders of the city and they sat at the at the at the openings of the gates. And if you had an issue or concern, you would take your issue. If you had a problem with your brother, you and your brother would go to the elders at the gate and you would talk to the elders and then the elders would rule about your situation because they were the, those were the ones who understood and, and were old. And, you know, we respect our elders. Right. But what was happening was, was that when you would take your situation to them, uh, maybe the person you had a problem with got to them before you got there and slipped them some money, slipped them some corn, gave them a few cows. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so that when you bring your case before them, they would not rule in your favor, though you were right. Amen. So that's what he talks about uh, when he talks about um, 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 established judgment in the gate. And the Lord saw this right. yeah. and the Lord was not happy. He was not happy all through the book of Proverbs. If you read the book of Proverbs over and over and over again, what's one of the things that's recurring in the book of Proverbs? An unjust balance is an abomination before the Lord. An unjust balance is when you rule wrong when you know you have right before you. Amen? Deep, what you got? I'm just thinking about it today. It's the same thing you said that was going on back then. It's going on it is. Today. They don't want to admit it. Mm -hmm. But you look at some of the athletes and stuff, they do things, they desire them to go to prison. They go and they slip money to people, and they get what two week probation or something like that. Amen. Or they get up, you know, they get someone who can go on their behalf, high power, and they they rule their case to the point where instead of them getting justice, guess what? They get a judgment, yeah. but it's not justice. Yeah. Amen. You got something? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, where I'm looking at uh, fifteen, I'm also looking at how telling us to to hate the evil, right? Love the good. It's also a form of repentance and so even though we we you know we say we a lot of people say we can't preach jesus out of the old testament we see the acts right here because right because what it says here it says it may be that the lord god of hosts will be gracious unto you so we're about to get into a little bit deeper right but he's telling us what to do so that god can be gracious for you know to us same way he did with moses amen where, where a, a repentant heart god will Come back and say, okay, son, okay, daughter, let me help. Amen. Amen. The lesson brings out that God's presence is through his obedience to him. Amen. And that is so true that that God wants us to obey what he asks us to do. Because we've been bought with prices, church. We're not, we're not, we're not just our own free agent. We right. we've been, we're in the house in the plan of God. Amen. All right. He said he may be gracious with us, and who's left over from the tribes of Joseph, from those descendants of those who are remaining. Praise the Lord. He says, verse 18, so God's looking for what kind of, uh, in this section, it says God's looking for a godly lifestyle. Yeah. Amen. And the godly lifestyle permeates through everything that I do, every decision that I make. Praise the Lord. God is looking for you to do right in every area of your life. Amen. He says, verse 18, a fearful time. It says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. 
to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Let's read verse 19. And if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him and went into a house and leaned upon his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark. And no brightness in it. I didn't want to hear somebody talk. Come on, somebody talk to me about this. Uh, somebody talk to me. Talk to me. Deke, what you got? The, 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 the people of Israel, they thought they were living right. You know, there was like a lot of, you know, they were talking about in church. They were doing everything. They were supposed to be doing offerings and everything. But here, Amos is telling them what's getting ready to happen to them. Right. And he's telling you, like, when you run from one danger, you're going to run into something that's even worse. Right. And then when you think you get in your own house and you rest, a snake is going to bite you. Lord have mercy. So you, you basically, this journey that the Lord saw everything that you were doing. Yeah. You mentioned in verse 15, the judgment. Now, here it comes. Yes. Right now, this is what's happening to you. Now, Amos was begging them. He said, even back to Adam and Eve, he says, Brian's about Adam and Eve. But he gave them a lot of grace in doing the children of Israel, all the adultery they were doing. They still had a lot of grace and right. So they still choose to do this. And so now it's too late. Now it's too late. Amen. Yes, sir. We got Holy Ghost still people in this place today. <laughs> and when you start reading, the people assumed because they were God's chosen. They could just live any kind of way, do what they want to do, and God is still going to bless them. Right. So how do we apply that to today? Filled with the Holy Ghost, but uh, last time I checked, we still born in sin, right? Shaking right. in iniquity, that old Adamic nature is still in us. So just because we've received the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name, have a repentant heart, it don't mean that we could just do anything we Amen. want to do, and God is not going to accept that. Right. Amen. So he says, well, because they thought the day of the Lord. Now, when we talk about the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is a day of judgment, either a judgment in a couple of ways. <clears throat> we know that the next. So let's talk about where we are right now. Twenty twenty three. The next day of the Lord is actually the rapture. the rapture. That's the day of the Lord. That That's that's in that's in scripture are interpreted through the word of God. But the next day of the Lord is the rapture. Now, watch this at the rapture. The rapture is a type of judgment. Because what's going to happen to the church? The church is going to be what? Taken out. Taken out. Right? But what's going to, so that's a blessing to the church, isn't it? Yeah. But what's going to happen to the world? The world's going to be what? Judge. Judge. They're going to be judged. Yeah. A, a judgment's going to be made on the world that, that, that they didn't make the rapture. Right. So now at the rapture, that day of the Lord, once the rapture takes place, according to the scriptures, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelations, that's going to start the tribulation period. Correct. Right. And that's going to start a, a series of judgments against those inhabitants that are here on the earth. All right. So what Israel, so let's back up here. Now, this day of the Lord was the day when God was going to come and they thought God was going to come and bless them. <laughs> the Lord. So they, here they are in the church, the Old Testament church, because Israel is considered the Old Testament church. Right. Here they, God's going to come and bless them, irregardless of what they're doing. That's and what I, Amos was telling them is that God's not just going to come bless you. You just live in any old kind of way. And people uh, think, still say all things work together for the good, but they don't love God. And they're not called according to his purpose. And they're not trying to be conforming to the image of God's dear son. And, they, and, they, and, they, and, and then when judgment comes, they got a problem with you because you a church person and they got a problem with God because God judges them. But 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 they have to understand that there's that that, that 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 their behavior and their actions is what's bringing these things upon them. Praise the Lord, and and that's what we have to understand that our behavior and actions either bring things on us uh, in any way. The Bible does say this, whether you believe it or not. For what sort of man so? Everybody say that 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 is a is a particular direct reference back to what. Was the was the was the object of the previous statement? Right. All right, that's what that is. That points back. So whatever you sown, that whatever it was, that shall you also what reap, reap. right? Yeah, so what happens is that people want to sow bad and expect good. People want to say of so and and guess what? Every action, every deed, every thought is a seed. Is a seed. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. And when you start looking at every thought, every deed, every word it seeds, and that I might get that back, you might start watching how you act, what you think, and above all, what you say. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go to the grocery store, mind your own business, got out of church, loving Jesus. You know, he just shout all over the place, spoken. He got a brand new tongue this Sunday. Someone come and cuss you out. Like, what happened? Well, you know, I sold that thing back 20 years ago. Well, I was just cussing folks out all the time. Because one thing about reaping, reaping has a tendency to show up when you least expect it. When you when 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 you like, well, you know, I think I'm good. The grace of God's on my life, and you know, I'm good. Next thing you know, it shows up. But the thing I'm trying to make here is that He says this day of the Lord is going to come upon you, and guess what? And you think you got away, and as soon as you think you got away, a worse situation is going to occur in your life. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Is verse 19 a parable? A man. As it did flee from the lion and the bear, met him and went into the house and leaned upon his hand and the serpent bit him. No, he's speaking of, of a situation. It, let me let me say this. He's speaking of a he's speaking of a situation that we, that we got to think about. It could be considered a parable because a parable is designed to teach us some type of truth. Right. So what he's saying is is that you go one place and you think that you left that place because it's bad and you run right into another situation. Another what what we said. <coughs> Jump out of the frying pan into the fire, right? Amen. Right? You know, it's that kind of situation. Well, I think my situation here is bad, so I'm gonna leave the situation and I run into a worse situation. Amen. And that's what that's and that's what um, um, Amos is trying to help us understand is that the Lord is all encompassing. That's why I try to encourage people. I'm gonna go back to it said again. That's why I try to encourage people to make sure you give God your ten percent. Because he may not, when, when the devourer comes, the devourer may not come and attack your money. He may come and attack your body. He may attack your household. He may, he may attack your car. He may attack something that's encompassing in your hemisphere. Right? Praise the Lord. But God said, when I do what I'm supposed to do by committing what he's given me back to him, he protects everything. And a lot of times, guess what? We want, we want this portion of, we want 85% of our life to be covered by God. But then we want this 15% we want to take care of. But God said that's not the case. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We, God, God is all-encompassing in our lives. Praise the Lord. And we have to see that, church. Praise God. Amen. And if you think that you're going to manage a portion of your life outside of God, that's the portion that is subject to the whims and the ways of the adversary. You know, I'm going to go to church, I'm going to do all this, but guess what? I'm still going to do this little piece right here. Amen. And that's that little piece right there will end up contaminating the rest of your life. All right? So so this is what he's saying. The man ran from the lion, and then he ran right into the bear. <laughs> then he went into the house, thought he was safe, snake bit him. So shall not the day of the Lord be in darkness and not light. And God is saying it's the same way. The Bible says, you know, we use this scripture out of context, but I'm going to say it. You know, the Bible says, if I don't praise God, the rock shall fall out, fall, or, or cry out, right? right? You know, we use that scripture. We, it, it preaches good, but we use it out of context. <clears throat> when the rocks start crying out, they're they, they going to say, they're going to say rocks. They're going to say that God's, God's glory, God's grace is so great. They're going to say, fall on us. What kind of sense does that make? But that's, but this is what's going to happen to men. Men's right. going to try to get away from God, and God's on their case so bad that they don't want the rocks to fall on them. And God said, that's not going to save you. So when the day of the Lord shows up, and guess what? Let me tell you something. When God's on somebody's case, right. you can't pray it off of them. Amen. Uh, uh, you, you, all you can do is ask God. All you can do is like David did. You know, remember David censored the people, right, in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. This thing got in David's heart. He numbered the people. This thing disrupted God. God got mad. The prophet came to him and said, David, what do you want? Do you want to flee from the Philistines? Do you want me to, do you want me to uh, judge Israel? Do we want you to be sickness? David said, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. I put you in my hands. And guess what? The, the, the One angel. Everybody say one angel. One angel, one angel came through and killed about 26,000 men. And he's at the threshing floor. And God tells the prophet to tell David, offer God a sacrifice. And when he offered God a sacrifice, the angel put his sword back in his sheath. 
stop killing folks. Praise the Lord. But what I'm trying to understand is that, you know, the Lord, you can't do nothing if God's on, on somebody's case. Right. But ask God to, to turn his hand and ask God to repent. And sometimes God does it and sometimes God doesn't. Praise the Lord. That's God's prerogative. Amen. That's why we want to stay on the blessed side of God, on the right side of God, God's favor, and not on the left side of God, which is God's judgment. Amen? But Israel, through their disobedience, through their lack of um, following God's law with their heart, as Deacon said, they were going through all the religious ceremonies, but God, but their heart was where? Far from them. Praise the Lord. And that's the same thing Jesus said. You, you worship me with your lips, but your heart is still thinking about Joe down the street that you just got out the bed last night. Though you know that's wrong, but you're still going down there and, 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 want, and want to accept what you're giving to God on the next day. And whatever your Joe down the street is, I'm just using an example, or, or your Sally down the street or whatever, whoever, I, don't, I hope nobody named Joe or Sally, I'm offended today, but, but someone know what I'm talking about, right? But all of us, if we're not careful, got something down the street that we do with we can get engaged in that's not pleasing to God. And then we get up and wipe our face and wipe our mouth as if we ain't done nothing, and we expect God's gonna keep on blessing us. God will give us a chance to repent, but after a while, guess what? God's gonna say that's enough. Time for, time for judgment to show up in your life. And the judgment really ain't designed to destroy you. The judgment is designed to help you turn back towards God. Yes, saw your hand. Yes. What was his what was his relationship? Yeah. Oh, he was a prophet of God, called by God to speak to the people of God during the time of Jeroboam. Now, if you understand Jeroboam, and you're in ETA, you'll cover Jeroboam. Jeroboam was one of the most wickedest kings there ever was. <laughs> Jeroboam, look at what Jeroboam did. Jeroboam stopped, stopped the worship in the temple and went and built a golden calf down the street. That's right. And told everybody, leave. we ain't going over to church today. We're going to go down here and worship this cow. This cow. That was Jeroboam did. Jeroboam told, what, and then we get down to verse number 26. He, 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 he tells them that they were no longer worshiping God. They were worshiping Moloch and this other one called Chemosh. And Moloch and Chemosh, would, there, it's, there was two things that Moloch and Chemosh required. Now, it's very good for you to go back and study all the idol gods in the Bible. Because you're going to find out that there, some people do still do the same thing today. Amen. Moloch and Chemosh would cause them to take their young and be burned in the fire. Moloch, let me show you what Moloch. Moloch was a bull face and it had hands and it had a ring and it was grazed and it was on fire. You would put the baby in its hands and the baby would roll down into the fire and burn up. That's crazy. But that's what they were doing. God only required one sacrifice. That was Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Amos, oh, I don't know. It's probably, his, I don't know who he was descendants of, but he was called as a prophet of God. We can look, if you go back to the first part of the book of Amos, chapter one, a lot of times it'll show what the prophet's genealogy is, where he's from. But Amos was just called by God during a time when uh, God needed a spokesman. No different than when you see Elijah. Y'all remember Brother Elijah? Elijah shows up in the second, um, uh, in, in second Kings, chapter 16, chapter 17, out of the blue. Don't give no type of genealogy, but yet he speaks on behalf of God and God hearkens to his voice. All right. Those are good questions, but I'll see if we can get some answers for you. Okay. All right. So uh, do you got something you got? No. I okay. So, so, so they thought the day of the Lord is going to be a good day. It's going to be a bad day. And look what, look what he says. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness, not, and not light, even what? Very dark and no brightness in it. So it's talking about that, that, that. Darkness has overshadowed the people of God. Amen. Because God is light and there's no turning or shadow of him in thee. So God has literally turned his back on them. Verse, look what he says. Look at these words in 21. I hate. I despise your feast days. And I will not smell your solemn assemblies. Now, if you were in Bible class on Wednesday, we talked about those, those sacrifices, didn't we? 
those offerings. So, so, so the the the, the feast days and the, the peace offerings were offerings that had to be offered after you took care of your sin and your trespasses. If you didn't, if you still had sin before God and trespassed before God, God would say, I would not receive the the, the offerings that, re, that that make us bring it into a fellowship and peace with God. So God is saying, what, what did Israel have before God? They had trespasses, didn't they? They had sins, didn't they? And they were offering these sacrifices without a, a, a changed heart. And God says, I hate and I despise your feast days and I will not smell your sweet solemn assemblies. He's saying, you, you, you stink in my nostril. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Because you're going through the you, you're, you're being religious right. without having relationship. Right. Amen. And we have to be cognizant and careful of that today, church, is that we have to make sure that we're serving God from our heart and not just going through the motions. Amen. Well, I'm just going to go to church today, you know, just do whatever, you know, because it's Sunday and that's what we always do. Knowing your heart is not in the house of God. You have to pray and ask, Lord, give me a heart that touches you today. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. So God is saying, look, y'all got to go back and get yourself right before you come and start offering these things. To me. Right. He says, take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the medley of thy vow. So here God's saying that when you sing and praise unto me, I'm not going to receive what you got to say because you got too much sin in your life. Right. Guess what, church? We can deal with sin today. We got the blood of Christ. Amen? How was how Israel supposed to deal with sin? They would have to offer some type of sin or trespass offering. Him, and God would receive them back to himself. But guess what? They were doing this, but they weren't doing it because they, they wanted God. They wanted, they really wanted to change. You know, some people come to church and they go through the motion, but they really don't want to change. You know, I still want to, you know, do my, I still want, I love God. Hallelujah. It might even speak in tongues, but guess what? I'm going to go right here and do, still do my little that's thing. Right. And, and every time you go do your little thing, God tap me and show you, know, you need to let that go. Because that's God. God's gracious. God ain't going to strong arm you to do nothing. See, people think God is a bully. God ain't no bully. God is a gentleman. Amen. And, and, you know, you're like, you go and you try to serve God and love God, and, 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 but, but you still want to do your thing. Guess what? That little thing right there is what is going to keep you from going up in the rapture. Amen. That little thing right there is what, what, what the enemy finds and presses on. Jesus speaks very plainly in the New Testament. He says the enemy comes to him and he finds nothing in me of him. He looked at Christ, there was nothing he could pull on. Because there was no sin in Christ. The thing that the enemy pulls on in us is that still that sin nature. Think about when, think about, I don't want to hear no testimonies right now. <laughs> but think about in your own mind when you failed God. When you didn't do what, what God's word called you to do, it was because of some area of my life that I still have not got full the victory or deliverance over. <clears throat> or I think I got deliverance over and I get myself in a situation and I find out that I don't. Right. Hallelujah. And sometimes the Lord allows us to go through those things that help us understand, you know what, you need to, see, you need to keep working in that area. You, need to keep, you, need, you know what, you need to fortify that area. You need to ask me to pray, you need to you need to not allow yourself to get into situations that allow that area to be exposed before the adversary. Amen. Because guess what? The enemy does something very particular. He does not um, make a sin. He causes us. He said he makes suggestions. And he suggests that us. And then guess who? That's we end up disqualifying. I like to say we end up disqualifying ourselves before God. See, Adam and Eve, the devil didn't make Adam and Eve sin. All he kept doing was offering Eve suggestions. Amen. That should not surely die. That's it. Word back up. <laughs> that should not surely die. Eve, go ahead. Eve was like, no, nah, God said we can't do it. But guess what? One thing that the enemy is that sometimes we're not is that he's persistent. He said, you know, he came Monday, Tuesday. Okay, Eve, I'll leave it on the day, but I'm coming back tomorrow. Um, and that's when I surely die. That's when I surely die. Thou shalt not surely die. <laughs> and now he's thinking about that thing. And now what happens? The suggestions, I end up doing what? Taking hold of what I've been suggesting. All right? 
So we have to understand, church, that we got to make sure that when things like that come into our hearts, our minds, and spirits that are contrary to the word of God, we need to find some scripture. We need to get some prayer. We need to put on a Christian song. We need to do something. <laughs> Praise the Lord to help counteract that thought. Because that thought is going to, if you keep dwelling on that thought long enough, it's going to turn into action. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Yes, sir. You know, there's a statement here that we can attribute it to a lot of things. It says, worship can be carried out to the letter of the law. Meaning, your praise, your worship, your, your church protocol, you can do all of that. But then it says, and still not be worship. Right. You know, and we should look at that and, and understand also that, again, whether you're church, unchurched, saved, unsaved, people can act a certain way. But even though you might be able to fool man, you will never fool God. Never fool the Lord. Never fool God. Amen. And and that and that is where um, God wants God 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 is not concerned about your twenty piece orchestra. <laughs> God's not concerned about your hundred thousand dollar multimedia setup. Uh, what God is looking for is sincere and open worshipers. Amen. Understanding that we need God's help understanding that our hearts are open to the move of God. I'm going to use another scripture we use out of context, but we use it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man come unto me, I'll come in and what and sup with him, right? We use that for a lot of times for altar call. That ain't really dealing with altar call. Right. But, 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 but the concept is the same. We have to come to church. We have to come in the presence of God with an open heart. Somebody say amen. We can't come with a closed heart. Hallelujah. We got to, we got to allow the Lord to touch our the most innermost parts of us. Some of us, man has damaged that part of us. We have one love center. I call it, I don't have Bible for, but I believe we have one love center. It's our heart. And in the heart is where we love and hate. It's in the heart where is the seat of our emotions. Praise God. And sometimes our emotions have been damaged by situations and circumstances that cause us not to open up unto God. When the Lord is the one that wants to come in and start helping fixing stuff. You know, some things, church, you got to face head on and deal with in your heart. You got to come to the understanding that if your heart ain't right, you say, you know what? My heart ain't right in that area. And Lord, I need you to help me. I ain't getting no man, but I'm going to keep on talking. You see, see, some things need to be dealt with head on. And we don't, a lot of times, want to deal with things head on because it brings up a lot of the memories. It brings up a lot of the emotions. It brings up a lot of the experiences. And what the Lord is trying to do is help you get free from continuing to view your life situation. Someone would call it your paradigm because your paradigm is a set of thoughts and behaviors that, that dictate your life because now your life is based off of these hurts, these emotions, these damages, and God's trying to give you, amen, a new vision in life. But guess what? You hold on to that stuff. And God's trying to clean that stuff out. When I read the word of God, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Christ, is he what, church? New creature. New creature. Old things are what? Behold, all things are what? Become new. God, and guess what, church? That's a process. And sometimes you got to open that can up and deal with that stuff. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Open it up and deal with that stuff so you can get it out so God can bring in some, something new. See, watch this. You can't bring in nothing new unless you get rid of the old stuff. Amen. We have a limited amount of capacity of emotional space. We, our emotional space is not ever open, everlasting. We have a limited amount. And if our emotional space is all packed with garbage, can I say that? If my emotional space is all packed with hurt, all packed with things like that, I got to get that stuff out so that the love of God can come in. Amen. But what has happened is that some people have, have wrapped their lives so much around that hurt and pain. Uh, one one author would cause that calls those rose colored glasses. Everybody heard the story about rose colored glasses? Everything you look at, you turn on, looks rosy, looks right. red, because that's the lens 
of your emotions, you're looking at life through, and God's trying to change that. And what God is trying to do with Israel is that Israel has allowed themselves to get encapsulated and trapped, amen, into idolatry. And now they're trying to get back to God. And that's why he says in verse 24, let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Ye have, ye have offered me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house, o house of Israel. But ye have borne the tabernacle of Moloch and Chin and your images and the star of your and the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Therefore, will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord of hosts, whose name is the God of hosts. Now, after this, Israel didn't turn. Israel did not go back to God. And God allowed the host of Assyria to come in and take them over because of their disobedience. The Lord is rebuking Israel today. He's saying that if you don't turn from your ways, guess what? I'm going to let the adversary just come in and wreak havoc in your life. Israel went into bondage, church. Yeah. God's people who were in bondage got free. And because they didn't serve God the way God wanted them, he allowed them to go back into bondage. Right. Amen. So it's the same way with us. God can deliver us out of sin, out of the things that we used to do, save us, baptize us, fill with the Holy Ghost. And we're not careful, praise the Lord. Amen. And we don't and we don't continue to get all that stuff out. Guess what? Those things will come right back into our lives. <clears throat> God told Israel to go in there and kill all them folks out, get rid of all yeah, those folks. Just like God comes into our life and tells us to get rid of everything that's not like me. But guess what? Israel let a few of them stick around. And as he let a few of them stick around, what did they end up doing? Turning heart, Israel's whole heart back to, to, to the things of the world. And the Lord is saying, if there's, and, and what do we, as Deacon Mercy, how do we apply this today? How we, this is how we apply this today. We have to look at our lives, look at our spirits, look at our actions, look at our conversations, look at our places we're going, and ask ourselves, are these things conducive to my spiritual walk? And if the answer is no, and I have control over them, you got to learn how to separate yourself from that situation. Amen. Can't nobody separate you but you. Amen. I don't have your, we don't have your devices. We don't know. I, look, I'm not, I'm not the sanctified police. God knows everything you're doing. I might not know everything you're doing. The Lord ain't told me or showed me in a vision or in a dream. I don't look. But I do know this. The Lord knows if you're living right or if you're not living right. And guess what? He knows how to help you get that back on the right road, especially if you really love God. Amen. If you really love God, you'll do what he says in verse 14. Seek the good and not the evil. Hate the evil. Love the good. Amen. And, and I'm going to tell you one other strike that we have against us. We have another strike against us because we've been living foul for so long. We've only been living safe for a few years. So how are you going to get, you've been, you've been saved for five years, but you've been living foul for 20 years. Right. A lot of times, church, you're not going to get 20 years of foulness out of you in five years. You, it, you, you want to give, you have to keep on working. They say that when a person smokes, it takes, no matter how many days they smoke, it takes that many days for the body to heal. So if a person smokes for 10 years, it says, the doctors say it takes 10 years for those lungs to completely heal. If they stop, if they stop. So why is it, church, that we expect people that come into the house of God that have been living foul their whole life, <laughs> they get saved, and we want them to be saints of God they get saved in July, and by Christmas, we want them to be, you know, an evangelist. Right. It ain't going to happen. That's an unrealistic expectation. Amen. Not saying they, they can't progress, but guess what? Some A lot of things in God take time. Yeah. And the church is supposed to be an incubator, a womb, if you please. Come on, somebody. Amen. The mother or the house or the bride of Christ, because what do brides do? Brides birth babies. Come on, somebody. When the bride is married to the husband, the bride and the, the husband is doing his job, and the bride is doing their job, babies got to show up. 
And that's the church. And the church has to nurture that baby. And let me tell you what babies do. Y'all know what babies do, don't you? Everybody know what baby does, right? Baby does two things. They cry and they poo. <laughs> Am I right about it? What babies do, don't they? They cry, man, always, you know, and they, they pull on themselves. So as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. So, so when people come into the church, guess what? They're going to they're gonna say all kinds of stuff. And they might have a blowout. <laughs> and, it's, and it, watch this. And the church, the bride, should, should pick that baby up. Shouldn't throw the baby out. Right. To me, churches, we threw the baby out. Pick that baby up, clean that baby off, hug that baby, let that baby know it's going to be all right. I'll tell you a story. I'm going to go. When I first got saved, I got saved. I was dealing with something. Praise the Lord. And <clears throat> I went and talked to my, my uh, one, sister, one of the saints at the church. It was my sister-in-law. But she was one of the saints at the church. And I began to talk to her. And I just got saved. Just got saved. I, I ended up doing, doing something I wasn't supposed to do. Praise the Lord. You don't even know what it is. Just know I did something I wasn't supposed to do even I got saved. So praise the Lord. Uh, and I talked to her and, I, and she said, you know what? She grabbed me and held me. She said, I'm so glad you came talk to me because she said, I'm, I, I'm not concerned about what had happened. I'm concerned what make, brings me more joy is that that bothered you and you want to get it right. Right. And I remember that conversation. And that was a, though she may never remember that conversation. I probably been saved probably two or three months. But guess what, church? I was thinking about going back. <laughs> and it was that conversation, those four or five minutes, that caused me to keep on going in God, where I could celebrate by the grace of God. I just celebrated, I think, what, 30, 33 years of being in the church. But it's these small conversations, it's these small instances where sometimes we have Great impact on people we don't even know. Right. Because we didn't throw the baby out with the bath water. We saw them. We were spiritual. Ye which are spiritual, what does it say? Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of what? Meekness. So, 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 so if somebody comes to the church and not doing anything new, grab them by the ground, put your arm around, say, let them know it's going to be all right. Yeah, so let's just keep, let's, 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 let's keep working on this together. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. And that's what Israel needed. Israel needed somebody to come along. And the prophet was trying to help them, but, the, but, but Israel wasn't trying to turn. So God ended up having to judge them. Amen? And we don't want the judgment of God to come on anybody's heart and mind. We want you to turn back toward the testimonies of God. Amen? amen. All right. Any questions, comments from anybody as we close out today? I'm over my time. Anybody? The, the sisters, anybody? All right. So just want to encourage you today. The Lord was not happy with Israel. Israel ended up going into judgment. But let me ask you this. Did Israel have opportunity to turn? Yeah. They did. Did they choose not to turn? Did they choose not to did, 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 did they turn? Let me say, did they turn? Not during this time. They didn't turn. And the judgment of God came upon their life. So our job as gospel carriers of gospel of God's kingdom is to encourage people to do the right thing. But we already know that everybody ain't going to what? Respond to the word of God. And guess what? You got to leave them in the hands of a just God. People come up here and they stretch them out right in front, right? They stretch them out right in front. And you know, the preacher tried to preach them into heaven. And you knew, you knew them. Right. And you're like, our job is not to preach somebody in and out of heaven. When someone's laying up here across the front of the casket, our job is to respect them for the decision that they made. And while you're still alive, you got some choices to make. Okay. Too many times they try to preach that person in heaven. And guess what? That person's already made their decision. Their decision is set, whether to the good or to the bad. But guess what? We still who are alive have to make some choices. Looking at them as an example. Say, do we want to go that way or do we want to go a different way? Amen? And we want to go the way of the Lord. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. I think I'm going to turn it back over to you. Amen. Yeah. And hope something was said to encourage you. But remember, God was not happy with Israel, but yet God still loved him. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord, Sunday school. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sunday school. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful Sunday school lesson. A rebuke from the Lord. Amen.